Hey, welcome back to my channel. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs and vlogs. If you've already seen my Happy Mail video, then you know that I was recently gifted an amazing collection of watercolors from an incredibly generous subscriber. And one of those sets was this, which is the Botanical Holbein watercolor set that has 24 five mil tubes. They are professional grade Japanese paints that they describe have a European style. The colors in this set in particular were curated with with botanicals in mind. That being said, I'm gonna swatch them. I've used them for florals as well as portraits and landscapes, including this one, which I'm going to demonstrate at the end. That's definitely a lot more flexible than the name would imply. I like working from pans just because I find that I tend to pick up too much paint when they're wet and it's just how I've learned and what I prefer. So my first step was to convert this into a pan. I bought this set from Amazon for an affordable price and I'll link it down below. And I just filled it with all the colors in an order that makes sense to me. In my very first video, that's the Happy Mail one, I was pretty much swatching with them still fresh and still wet but in this video I'm going to be swatching them once I've let them dry for a few days. Because I've been swatching a lot recently I wanted to switch things up so I actually decided to do like drawings of um, paint tubes as my swatches and I then added patterns in the middle so that I could see how transparent the paints are. In this set of 24 there are 15 single pigment colours, there are three colours that have two pigments and six colors that have three pigments which is worth bearing in mind when if you really like mixing in terms of the colors that are actually included there are three yellows one orange three reds one pink four violets three greens four blues and one gray with four earth tones this set has been out for years but it's worth noting that it actually says not for sale in the US or Canada. I suspect it's because it also has cobalt colours and it basically says it doesn't have all the health and safety warnings necessary to sell it in the US. They are available on Jackson's and I will link it down below in the description for you. But one thing that I've discovered by painting with them and painting with other watercolors and just comparing them is that each set seems to have something that makes it incredibly special. So for example, the core acts in water in a completely unpredictable, beautiful way. Holbein acts more predictably, but is so bright and blends really, really nicely. Roman Schmoor has like stunning granulation and is super affordable. And if you want to know if this Holbein set is for you, then you just go ahead and keep watching so that you can get a better idea of how exactly it performs. Don't forget to hit the like button and to consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this, as not only does it make me really happy, but it helps with the growth of the channel and the community that we have on here. As is custom for me, let's start with the coolest yellow. So this is cadmium yellow, it is PY35. It's just like a beautiful, vibrant, nice and cool yellow. It's rated three out of three light fastness, opaque, non-staining and intense. Then this is imidazole yellow, which is PY154. It is semi-transparent and I've kind of done these black lines in the middle so that we can see how opaque or transparent they are. Another thing that's quite clear is just how vibrant and nice these colours are. So this is a slightly, this is a cooler yellow, this is a nice warmer yellow because it's leaning towards orange. Leaning towards orange even more <coughs> is now the cadmium yellow deep. And when I did the swatches earlier, I did them while the paints were still still wet, but now I'm kind of re-wetting them from dry and you can see how easily they re-wet. I'm just gonna make that a little bit lighter so that we can see a nice gradient. It's made of P020 and PY35 and again, opaque. Then we have the vermilion hue and this is made up of P073, PR254 and PY110. It's rated as transparent. And it's like a nice orangey colour. To be perfectly honest, I don't feel like I make much use of my oranges. Like I do, I have seen quite a few people mention that they can make really nice mixing colours. And that's something that I want to experiment with moving forward. Next colour that we have is the Pyrrole red which is PR254. I'm gonna make it more vibrant here so it's semi-transparent. Look at that. 
it's so super rich so you can see that the paint's just re-wet so easily and i haven't added any more paint and it's just stretching and stretching and stretching next we have the quinacridone opera a super vibrant pink it's made up of bb10 and pr122 again rated as semi-transparent and it literally almost looks like fluorescent <laughs> that kind of pink as i say i'm not really one for swatching um I find it useful especially for like seeing the colors and playing around and seeing how they work but I just feel like sometimes it can be a little bit not as fun which is why I'm doing it this way instead still get to play around with the colors and see so next we have crimson lake this is made up of PR177 PR122 and PV19 and this is just such a nice like cool cool red almost leaning towards like purple reminds me of like a wine red and again I think because this color has quite a few pigments it's not one that I would like mix a lot but then again I think it's just so beautiful on its own that it would be completely fine not to mix it with other colors and just almost use it as like a convenience color next we have carmine so carmine is made up of pr83 let me pick up some more so it almost it kind of it's just almost like a redder version of the crimson lake a redder slightly warmer version of the crimson lake the yellows were a little bit easier to rewet but still all beautiful colors next we have the quinacridone violet you know of late i'm really feeling purples and i know that i can mix them myself but there's just something so nice about oh my gosh just look at that color being able to have this fresh out of the tube so this is pv19 it is stunning look at that i really like like reddish purples and that is essentially what this is <laughs> so i'm actually really happy with this color look at that next we have cobalt violet light which is pv47 and you may know from previous videos that me and cobalt violet have a bit of an interesting relationship i.e i tend to hate it so moment of truth okay <laughs> this is better than the one that i tried from um daniel smith but still not great and you you can see i'm like dipping turning turning still turning still turning really trying to pick up as much color as i can and here it is <laughs> whereas if i did that with one of the other colors this would be completely saturated so it's definitely better than the um daniel smith one that i had but again just a low um low color payoff so this is not this is not a color that i like that works well with me or that i would get next we have bright violet and it is made of bv7 and bv15 so let's see how this yeah this is nice and you see i only like i gently gently dipped the brush in the paints and i still got way more color than i did with the cobalt violet and i don't know why they're so hard but they just are and i thought i'd do one do this one a little bit different so yeah i think this like this uh, the quinacridones are just so stunning i really really like those colors next we have permanent violet which is made of pv23 and let's see and yeah perfect so this is a cooler purple whereas this is a warmer purple heading towards red this is a cooler one leaning towards blue and again really nice and i'm wow look at that and i'm literally lifting this from like the stone dry i haven't re-wetted them i'm just acting as if i'm really in a rush which quite often i am and i haven't pre-wet them which to be perfectly honest i should and these are the colors in real time and how easy it is to just get that paint next we have permanent green you know i love my greens because i love florals so this one I think is going to need a little bit more water to reactivate. It's made up of a number of colours. So it's made up of PY3, PY53 and PG7 and is rated as semi-transparent. 
and yeah it's really covering up that black line <laughs> but this is a really nice bright green and then we have hookers green so again some more convenience colors and i'm going to start with the most saturated down here and this is like a almost like an emerald green that's what it looks like as in what i imagine emeralds to look like nice and bright it's made up of three pigments which are pg7 py 110 and py 150 and it's rated as transparent and indeed it is it's just glazing over so nicely over those lines whereas if you compare it to the permanent green you can kind of see that the black line has been obscured this bears the most significance for like my urban sketching for example where quite a lot of the time i will tend to put down ink first and then go over and paint it so that i'll know that some of the lines will be kind of painted over and won't be as crisp now we have sap green and oh, it doesn't seem to matter which brand it is i love sap green it's just such a like nice yellowy light green it just i feel like it looks nice and natural for botanicals you don't have to it's just a like the perfect um convenience green that's what it looks like to me like absolutely stunning i it is made up of py 150 pg7 and pr 122 and yeah just look at that it's nice and transparent it's just the green that you want any floral to be with and it looks natural like that's what yeah anyway <laughs> i love it next we have cerulean blue so this is made up of pb35 and it's rated as a semi-transparent and let's see yep yeah, definitely heading towards semi-transparent if not opaque it's like a nice light sky blue that's what a lot of the cerulean blues look like to me not quite as pungent as the like permanent blues or in that they're called indanthronone colors but still really nice nice and easy to lay down then cobalt blue a little bit weary because <laughs> cobalts as we have seen can be a bit hit or miss with me but let's see so it's made up of pb29 and rated as semi-transparent and to be perfectly honest so it's it's much better than the cobalt violet yeah it's all right it's not bad it's actually quite good and like a natural blue like a darker more overcast sky blue now we have ultramarine the stable blue that we have it's pb29 i'm kind of curious to see if it will actually granulate as a lot of ultramarine colors do but let's see yeah started to granulate already <laughs> not a massive amount but it's definitely there and now we have a prussian blue and just to say the ultramarine light was pb29 prussian blue is pb27 and i really like the prussian blue in oh look at that oh that is stunning i really like the prussian blue that's in my windsor and new uh, windsor and newton wash set and that is really how i started falling in love with this color but yeah this is stunning i i saw it in a different brand i think the daniel smith and it wasn't quite as dark and as pungent as i wanted it but this is just what i like this is perfect oh this is so <laughs> this is so so nice so yeah pb27 semi-transparent next we have Payne's gray so let's see Again, Payne's Grey is another colour that I tend to love. Um, both in, especially in watercolour, actually. I don't know, I just feel like it adds the depth that I want in my, in my florals quite a lot of the time. Which I know is kind of odd given how dark it is, but yeah. It's just such a nice colour. I'm trying not to obscure everything, but... It's just so nice. So it's Payne's Grey. It's made up of PR122, PBK6 and PB15. And understandably because of the blue, it's leaning more bluish. But still just such a nice grey colour. I love it for shadows as well. Next we have a yellow ochre. So this is semi-transparent. It's made up of PY42. And look at that. 
semi-opaque rather, re-wetting nice and easy. It's just like a nice earthy yellow. And we have for more earthy colours, we have Burnt Sienna as well, which is made up of PBR7. And oddly enough, Burnt Sienna is a colour that I was using quite a bit when I was doing skin tones. So it's a colour that I'm glad to have. Really, really nice. Then we have Burnt Umber, which is PBR7. I kind of expected it to be a bit darker. Like it will still do. But I almost feel like there's just a very gradual progression from these colours. So it might have been nicer to have it a bit, a bit darker. And last but certainly not least, we have Van Dyke Brown. So yeah, I thought the Burnt Umber would look more like this Van Dyke Brown, basically. But again, more pigmented. But I can't, honestly, these colours are just so nice, so easy to re-wet, so vibrant. I am so incredibly lucky <laughs> that these were gifted. Just out of curiosity, I'll try and do some lifting to see how they work. Whether they lift easy or not not happening okay <laughs> none of these colors are lifting let's see nope they just all seem to be really staining and hard to lift apart from cobalt violet which permanent green kind of crux of the matter is and these colors can kind of be lifted but certainly not a massive amount honestly i'm so grateful so grateful so excited but yes let's get into the painting in this part of the video as i do this painting i just want to give you my overview of what my experience has been like painting with these holbein paints over the past few weeks i'm going to be using my fabriano 50 percent watercolor block which is glued on all four sides as well as my graduate de la Rani, um, multi-purpose brush and my princeton aqua elite brush which is a watercolor brush and just because they are nearby this was meant to be a really quick and loose watercolor landscape and that's essentially what it is so um even though the set is called a botanical art watercolor set <laughs> for some reason in my head it didn't register that that's what the colors were curated for so i actually did more landscapes and even more portraits than watercolor florals with this which is funny because normally my go-to is florals but i've been trying to experiment and i think using new supplies can do that and encourage you to experiment um so for this piece at the moment what i'm doing is i've pre-wet the whole block and i just wanted to get a loose gradient of color so i was just putting color everywhere and what you can see as i'm doing this is that the holbein is very predictable as in where you put it down is where it's going to stay down and it's funny because as part of this set i also got um core watercolors which do the complete opposite so it's funny to have paints that behave so differently <laughs> in the same palette so you'll see as this dries that they blend very nicely um i found it quite nice and easy to work with i found the colors incredibly vibrant and for some reason i was inspired to try and use pink and i initially when i swatched i'm not going to lie was not the biggest fan of quinacridone opera which is bv10 and pr122 and not just because it was light fast but also because it almost looked neon like it's so bright i was like what on earth could i paint with this but i wanted to try using different colors and that is how it kind of ended up being featured in this painting and the more i mixed it with my cadmium yellow the more i got like nice peachy colors and from there i just got carried away <laughs> and just started using it in terms of the set itself as i said they are vibrant and they're known for it they were so easy to re-wet like i didn't need to add any extra water before i started the water that i had on my brush was more than enough to pick up a great amount of color they mixed in a really nice way and to be perfectly honest i haven't done like a proper mixing color chart it's just been my experience from painting the things that i want to paint and the colors that i wanted to make i was able to make relatively predictable colors 
from mixing with regards to the color choice so as i said it is a botanical botanical set and i think that explains why it has four purples i personally i'm not mad at it i love purples especially recently so i was quite happy with the color selection a lot of the time you get given black which i don't find helpful or you get given white which again i don't find helpful and this set doesn't have any of that which i really liked it has a cool a medium ish and a warm yellow it has has two cool reds and like a warm one warm red it has the quinacridone opera that i didn't like initially but now it's just i love it it's such a unique color so bright it is fugitive and we'll talk about that in a second but that was quite nice like i said there are four purples of which um, one is fugitive one is really light fast and the other two are like average light fastness or excellent light fastness according to them so that was good i liked the greens probably apart from the sap green they wouldn't necessarily be my like first choice i do like i do think you can get better greens by mixing but they were there and they were helpful to have and in light of it being a botanical set it makes sense it would have been maybe nice to have a darker green or like a moodier green that's the only thing that i could say instead of maybe having the permanent green with regards to the blues again there are four blues of which there's like a cerulean blue that's going to last through the test of time because it's really light fast there's a cobalt blue which some will love some will hate um there's an ultramarine light as well as a prussian blue now personally i love the color prussian blue i thought it's really nice it's deep it's dark it reminds me of the prussian blue from my gouache that i use all the time so i was actually really happy to see this color but it did bring to light an interesting i want to say issue but perhaps an interesting concept and that is that it is not really that light fast and there are a few colors in here that are actually not that light fast including two which are just outright fugitive and it just made me wonder how important is light fastness to me <laughs> and it, it's a mixed bag i'm not going to lie i think the general consensus that i've seen from the internet is that if it's something that you're going to sell then you know try and use light fast colors because you don't want to sell something that's then going to disappear within a few years or even a few months um if you can try and use light fast colors if you can buy less colors that are good quality and light fast it is better than buying an entire set of fugitive colors which to me again makes sense and then there are other ways to i guess get around it and that is for example if you know that you're not going to sell originals and you want to make digital copies of all your paintings and that's what's going to be your main i guess way of representing your art then does it really matter if it's fugitive if it's such a beautiful color probably not but that's something that's worth bearing in mind especially for example with this painting i used a lot of quinacridone opera which in theory means that if i were to leave this painting in the sun it would look very different in a few months maybe if i'm lucky in a few years but because i love the painting i will probably take a proper picture of it so that i can have a digital copy so even if the original does fade which would be unfortunate i will have a copy of it didn't really give much thought into this until i saw miranda from alkali creek she made a video where she did two paintings and left them up in a window for three months and one of them changed drastically like so so drastically sometimes you don't really take on board how big an impact light fastness can have holbein rates light fastness on a scale of one to three although they also have a four three being the most light fast one being pretty much fugitive and this set has two fugitive colors which are quinacridone opera as well as the bright violet it then has three colors that are rated two out of three for light fastness which are carmine permanent green and prussian blue they have six colors that they've rated four out of three and these are cobalt violet light cerulean blue cobalt blue yellow ochre burnt sienna and burnt umber the rest are three out of three and in theory four out of three will last the test of time with regards to the colors that i think is the biggest issues probably the reds the fact that the only cool red that has a single pigment is carmine and that is low light fastness or that is two out of three light fastness i love the color prussian blue and that's two out of three light fastness i think that would probably be the biggest issue for me and also what does two out of three mean no one really knows does it mean that it's going to last for 100 years in which case it's no issue at all or does it mean that it's going to last for six months if you hang it up on your wall. Holbein doesn't really say. 
if you are listening you know that you're an MVP and just let me know is light fastness a deal breaker for you like do they have to be light fast for example does the fact that this is a 24 set of watercolors two of them are fugitive three of them have low-ish light fastness would that make it a deal breaker or does it not matter I think the main consideration for me would be the Prussian blue and all the colours that in theory I would want to mix with it which in theory would make it slightly less light fast. So perhaps that's something that I will experiment with in the future, put it up in a window (laughs) when we get like a proper summer to see if they change. Another aspect I found myself experimenting with with the Holbeins was layering, like I did quite a few paintings where I needed to build up on layers and it's because it really worked like a dream (laughs) like as long as I let the layer underneath dry completely um to avoid blooms I found that I could control the amount of water very nicely that I could actually layer on top very nicely and I think this piece is an example of that now that I'm trying to do portraits and also especially when I do landscapes I do add layers so the fact that it worked so nicely meant that it was something that I kept going back to so if you like layering then this might be one that you might consider if you like having watercolors that are like predictable in terms of they go where you want them to go so they don't move as much you have to move them yourself if you like then again this might be a set that you really like with regards to other properties granulation so they don't actually granulate that much for the most part which for me was kind of a win I know I'm kind of like coming over towards granulation but I think it's for specific pieces or for specific things for the most part I like to I don't know I guess control what is granulating and what is not granulating and for this the paints for the most part do not granulate and I think the only ones that were granulating were the burnt sienna the burnt umber the van dyke brown and the ultramarine um, light to a certain extent and then the other colors did not so if you don't like granulation then again this might be a set that you want to consider if you do like granulation then perhaps this isn't necessarily the set for you because it's not that you can't make them granulate but it doesn't seem to be like the natural thing that they do the set has 15 colors that have single pigments three colors that have two pigments and six colors that have three pigments and as much as I love the color selection like looking at them I just think it's it's a beautiful palette I do want to kind of highlight that there can be an issue or a challenge when you have colors that have three pigments for example because then if you mix two of them together you end up having six pigments together and the reason that I kind of noticed this or I had to be a bit more mindful of it is that I found myself making brown or mud when I wasn't necessarily intending to and that is because I was mixing for example crimson lake with um, a yellow and that is what was happening being said the set does have 15 colors that are single pigments so there is like a definitely a split primary like you have you have plenty of yellows and reds and blues that you could use instead to mix your own colors and get really nice vibrant versions of those colors and the only color that I think is say missing from that split primary would be a cool red that is single pigment and light fast if that makes sense so you do have a carmine which is pr83 but it's low light fastness the other cool red is crimson lake but that has three pigments which are pr177 pr122 and pv19 so in theory if you wanted to have a nice cool red to make a nice blue you would either have to use a color that isn't light fast or you would be using a color that has three pigments to be perfectly honest the set does also have four purples so it's not a you know it's certainly not a deal breaker but that would be the one thing if I really had to search for a color to add it would probably be like just a cool red to add to the set. In terms of other properties like I've mentioned already lifting works when you first put the paint down and the paint is still wet and the paper is still wet once it dries it's not lifting and I think that's one thing that makes it nice to kind of layer over and to glaze over but if you do like lifting quite a lot so you like you know take making highlights that way then you might find it a little bit more challenging with this I must say it was easier to do on the 50% cotton paper than it was on a moleskin when I was doing the initial swatches but it still wasn't like the easiest things to do
going back to this painting which I was having a lot of fun with I essentially did like you saw the first layer that was just to kind of get nice gradients and a loose background I then did another layer to make it a bit darker and waited for that to dry once that layer dried I then did another layer this time painting in the buildings and making them really vibrant and kind of making the areas towards the center of the page lighter than the ones away from the page to kind of give an idea of shadows I I then kind of wanted to start adding um, I guess effects to the water and the way that I did that was again by adding another layer but this time not wetting the whole area I just wanted to wet certain parts and then I just started dropping different bits of colour to those lines and um, almost angling the paper down because I really just wanted the paper to I, I really just wanted the paint to flow on its own and to have like a nice organic feel to it now as I said where you put Holbein down is where Holbein is staying so it didn't really like flow even when I, when I was trying to use like a blow dryer to move it out of the way but that was okay I still got the effect that I wanted with perseverance and adding more water and just being more tactful about where I wanted the colors to go and then after doing that I just wanted to deepen the painting so add more depth so I started adding more shadows I started using um carmine to kind of make it darker then also use some quinacridone violet again to just add shadows and add depth and yeah I really like how the painting turned out I was confused by the quinacridone opera when I swatched it I was like why would they include this color it's just such a unnatural looking color but it's won me over like I really really like this painting <laughs> I really do like it and I really did have a good time and I have had so much fun using the Holbein colours now as I've mentioned I've done a portrait for the CNS calling challenge which I will link at the end of the video once I have completed that I have also done another painting of Venice from my happy mail so I've done plenty and I am still continuing to experiment with it because it is just so much fun if you are still watching you are most definitely a real MVP and I really 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 appreciate you. Remember to let me know that you are still watching by telling me how much light fastness ratings um, matter to you and also when it comes to watercolour paints or the supplies that you use do you get really technical like do you like knowing about the pigments and all that information or do you just use it irrespective pigments don't matter so let me know yay for technical details or no I just want to create with it regardless of what it's like a huge thank you to the amazing subscriber who gifted me this set and to all of you for watching thank you so much for watching I'll see you next week bye